First, I'd like to take a moment to express my gratitude to the women who took time out of their busy schedules to participate in this study. I'd also like to acknowledge the contributions made by the Regional District of Nanaimo at Oceanside Place and the VIU Scholarship Research and Creative Activity Office for creating initiatives like the VIU REACH Award. Finally, I would like to thank Dr. Jackie Onsescu for inspiring my application to the REACH Award and to Dr. Aggie Way Hill for her commitment, mentorship, guidance, and unwavering support with my project. Thank you so much, Aggie. You're welcome. Okay, let's begin. Before I became a mature learner here at VIU, I was a not so typical Canadian hockey mom. I say not so typical because I'm the mom of two girls who absolutely love the sport of ice hockey. As you can imagine, having two daughters that play and officiate hockey here on Vancouver Island, I spend a lot of time in an ice arena. I'd say up to upwards of 15 to 20 hours a week, most weeks from August through May. And as my daughters got older and closer to aging out of their minor hockey experiences, I started to wonder where they would play after their minor hockey careers were over. It was about this time that I started to notice a very interesting phenomenon. As we were coming and going from the arenas, I was starting to see more and more women my age, and slightly a little bit older, carrying hockey bags in and out of the rink, and they didn't belong to their kids. This got me thinking, hmm, I wonder how many of these women were actually able to play hockey as little girls, and what do they have to juggle in their life now to be able to play? As a recreation enthusiast and emerging scholar, I really wanted to understand and learn more about their experiences as adult female hockey players. When I had the opportunity to apply for a REACH study grant through VIU, I decided it was a perfect time for me to find out. So today I'm gonna to share with you a few of the things that I learned along the way. I'll share the purpose of my research, the methods I used in the study, and then I'll wrap things up by going over and really tying together what it all really means. So I, studied my, or I started my research project by developing a research question and by reading a lot. This led me to ask myself, what did I really want to know and why would it matter? I knew I wanted to focus on understanding women's motivations to play ice hockey and what they needed to navigate in order to make that happen. I also knew that my ultimate goal was to improve women's experiences by being able to provide information to local practitioners that, um, that might complement what they're already doing in their marketing and promotional strategies and help them understand and address the unique needs of women. In short, I wanted to contribute to the development of sustainable women's ice hockey programs in my community. During the literature review process, I came to understand that most of the information to avail available today looks at um, girls' participation in recreational ice hockey leagues. But research that focuses on women's engagement in adult recreational ice hockey programs was really quite limited. I also learned two very important things. One, women can be very hard to predict, and two, they're motivated by a diverse array of individual factors. Some women participate in leisure activities, such as recreational ice hockey programs, to increase their physical fitness as a means of competition or to challenge themselves in some way. But many engage as a way of creating community or to gain, just gain a sense of freedom, independence, or belonging. Ultimately, what I came to understand is that women's motivations to play recreational ice hockey are as diverse and individual as their personalities and their individual leisure needs. So I gathered the sample for this study by using convenience and snowball sampling to engage women, hockey players, and their friends from the communities of Oceanside and Nanaimo. I did a social media push through Facebook and Instagram to entice more women to participate and I captured the attention of local team managers who shared the invitation with their teams as well. I held a number of focus group sessions in both communities 
on the women's regular practice nights to try to entice participation. And then I used audio and video recording to collect and transcribe the data from each session. The video recording was mostly used to help identify who was speaking during the transcription process. It's important to note that this study includes a relatively small sample size. One of the challenges that I had in using focus groups as a data collection method was that many of the women had to cancel at the last minute due to family commitment or other obligations. But when I began analyzing the data, I noticed an important qualitative difference between the two communities. The women that played in the Nanaimo leagues were more inclined to participate if their play included a heightened element of challenge or competition, whereas Oceanside players identified more with the creation of community, team camaraderie, skill building. This notion of cultural difference between the two communities, it was reinforced by the participants in the study as well. During the course of the research, further descriptive qualitative analysis uncovered a number of interesting themes. But today I'm gonna to focus on specific themes I found the most interesting. First, women participate in ice hockey as a, mean, as a means of resistance. And second, they engage in recreational ice hockey programs as a path to personal transformation. Interestingly, women in both communities identified being motivated to play ice hockey as a means of resisting or being limited by traditional gender roles. For example, uh, being limited or labeled to being just a mom or just a wife. One participant said it well when she said, quote, recently I've noticed how much my identity is a part of my hockey experience. When I'm at the rink, I'm not a wife, I'm not a mom, I'm a hockey player and that's all there is to it, end quote. Activities such as ice hockey can often create the space for women to explore unconventional opportunities and challenge their lack of power or dissatisfaction with typical societal views of their expected roles and responsibilities or behaviors. The message here is that playing ice hockey is empowering for women. The second theme I was able to identify throughout the course of this study was that most women recognized that they were often motivated to play as a path to transformation during times of vulnerability in their life. For example, two participants shared that they first became involved when becoming an empty nester or during the course of a divorce. Another said that hockey helped her to find her strength to recover after a significant injury. For these women, their vulnerability inspired their leisure engagement as a way to be empowered and gather strength. A number of participants agreed, saying that they felt supported by their hockey teams when going through personal challenges as well. Almost all of the women in this study identified community or building a sense of belonging as a primary motivation for participating in their chosen recreational ice hockey league. Here, the leads themselves provided the space and place for relationship building and social interaction. Most women valued the relationships and feelings of belonging that participating on a team afforded them. Interestingly, only a small number of women identified a service aspect or the ability to volunteer with the league as a motivation for participation. So what does this all mean? Well, what I've come to know through the course of this study is that women participate in leisure, in this case, recreational ice hockey leagues, um, sorry, to, to not only get active and participate in sport, but also as a means of gaining a sense of control, claiming their power, or as a way to transition through various life stages. As recreation practitioner, practitioners, it's important for us to recognize this space, place, and social value that programs like these have in our communities. Recreation providers are in the unique position of being able to influence the development of networks and friendships that support women in our communities. On a more practical level, creating an atmosphere and marketing materials that inspire um, a sense of community, empowerment, and control will undoubtedly encourage more women and the not-so-typical hockey moms like me to engage and play more. Thank you.